All right, welcome back. Oh. All right, so we completed chapter 14, growth and consolidation. Any questions on this chapter? Any thoughts, any questions? Yes. That's... So like in the fourth stage of equipping, mm. we're talking about life groups. So like this, uh, you mentioned like if somebody want to come and start, you will ask them, are you part of the life group? So I have two questions. It's like, is it not compulsory for all the church members to be a part of life group? Okay. So one is we don't want to make compulsion on people, right? It's not like you, you know, you have to be, but we encourage everyone to be part of a life group. That's what we want, right? Now, one is see, people are traveling, people work in the evenings. Uh, there are many reasons why people can't be part of a life group. Right. So sometimes people want to attend, but they can't attend. So, for example, we have some some, you know, some of the youth girls life group. Some, some of them meet online. Why? Practically, they, they can't get back home late at night. Right? Only Saturday evening is. Uh, but something that we always want to do is we want to see each and every member of our church being part of a life group because that's where they can grow. So if you notice on our announcements every Sunday, the life group announcement is there every single Sunday. Uh, and so what we also do is we train our life group leaders to, to have this thing of, okay, you go reach out to people, get people to come to your life groups. So that's where that responsibility even they take. Yeah. So, yeah. When we are starting a life group, like, can we also allow people from other churches also to be a part, like who are not from our congregation, mm. who are staying in that area also yeah. to come and be part of the life groups? Okay. To answer this question plainly, yes, they are allowed. But there are some guidelines that we that we have set. See, APC as a church, we have our own culture. We have our own way of doing things. Now, there are many good churches across Bangalore. They have their own culture and their way of doing things. Right? Now, if somebody from another church wants to be part of our life group, APC life group, they're welcome to come. But they cannot say, you know, this is how we do it in our church, so can we do it that way? They cannot overpower and say, you know, you know, this they may be somebody who's many years in the Lord. Or, or it may be somebody who's just a beginner or just growing, still growing in the Lord. They can come, but they cannot force the worship leader to sorry, the life group leader to change the way ministry is done. They cannot enforce what they learn. So for example, end times. If somebody from another church comes and says, hey, what are you studying about end times? Let's do uh, uh, you know, the parables of Jesus. Now, he, he or she must not do that firstly, because we don't want the point of the life group is that as a church, we want to grow together. So we'll, we'll do the life group study material, the four questions. Um, so they are welcome to come, but they have to be obedient to and you know listen to the worship, to the life group leader. Uh, because we've gone through times when you know uh, people from other churches have come and they've overpowered the life group leader. And the life group leader was you know very quiet, very simple person. He said, okay, really, then okay, then we'll do it this way. And everything became a problem. And eventually, we all, you know, they took some of our church folks and went to their church. Right? So that also happened. So we we informed them and say, you're welcome to come, but you cannot, you know, coerce, force people uh, to, you know, try all of this because that will be very unethical. Uh, so we let them know. Okay. All right. So anything else? Any other questions? Okay. So I think as a church, APC, we have gone through all of these stages. 
right? We've gone through the pioneering stage. There was a time we had two staff, two people as staff, right? One was an administrator, and the other was, uh, you know, life group coordinator. Just two people we had. Then things started growing, right? So there was a time we were two people as staff, as an organization. Then we started to grow. Then we got into the administrative stage, and right? we started getting more people involved, getting full-time staff. Uh, you know, uh, then we needed a website and all of these things, YouTube. So we needed more people, and then we needed a youth pastor. We needed associate pastors for our location. So we went through all the stages. So what you see now in APC is not something that just started off. I'm sure you all know that, right? It took a lot of time to get to this place, a lot of learning, a lot of mistakes made, learn from that mistakes, uh, and we have come to this place, right? So it's not like we are, you know, we've become self-sustaining, self but it's not like we are satisfied, okay, we've reached the... Uh, no, we want to press in more. We want to become even more apostolic. We want to keep equipping, building people up, raising up new leaders. So, uh, so this is uh, this is something that we will look forward to. So, for example, even if we plant new churches, right, uh, maybe across our nation or even overseas, other nations, if we plant churches, we're going to follow the same process. We're going to have the same guidelines uh, as much as possible because this is something that worked for us, right? And um, you now we continue to grow and build ourselves as a church. Now, let's get into chapter 15, multiplication and branching. It's a small uh, chapter, uh, yet important chapter. Plant additional congregations in the same city. So how do I do that? How do I plant now? As a church, I have I have pioneered the church. We are maybe about 200, 300 people, and God puts in your heart, we need to plant another church. How do I do that? Firstly, equip people for it. I have to be able to equip people to help them understand, okay, this is what we are doing. When we plant a new church, this is what you will have to do. Now, equipping doesn't mean only in the word, but also in other things. Right. Then you envision them. Very important. A, a leader is somebody who carries the vision and is able to impart the vision to others. That's a good leader. That's you. You envision them. Hey, this is what we want to do. Right. We want to go. We want to start a church here. We want to do it this way. So envision them. And this local church will be will minister to all the people in this area. And we want to minister that way. Right? We want to start a strong local church, eventually get to 300, 500 people. Right? Send out church planting teams. Right? We send out people. We do a little bit of a survey, send out teams. See, OK, this is where uh, could we, do you think we can start here? Do we think we can start there? One thing that we did in Mangla was when we wanted to plant the church, we went as teams to see what can be done, where, what, what, what place is convenient, what timings are convenient, what kind of people do we want to minister to. So we had gotten a complete idea. Now, if we are going to plant a church towards that side of Mangla, there's going to be only students. They are not expecting family with children. Even if they come, that's good. But the main target is students. This is a student community. So you, you know, you send out church planning teams and you envision your church how it wants to be, right? Um, churches function independently. You can you can function as one church or you can function as satellite campuses. So, for example, APC, we are five locations, but we are one church. Right, same announcements that play in Central and the other locations, the announcements are the same. Right? So, for example, the announcements come by email. It goes to the sound and setup team. Oh, sorry, the media team. It's the same announcement for all location. Nothing changes. 
right? So you can work as one or you can work as different churches. It's up to you, right? But what we do is we work as one, right? So there could be a time, you know, I, uh, they can, I can be rostered to lead worship at North, or I can go preach at West, right? I, or I can go to South and preach, right? If I'm, if there's a need, it's not like only this person is for this church. No, you're all one, right? If there's no competition. There is no, uh, you know, uh, any anything against each other. No, all of us are one. So if there, there are times I've gone to South and preached. I've led worship at South. Then I've gone to North, West, West led worship at Central. So when you look at it, it's all one. I'm serving in APC. Right? We're not different. Again, plant new churches in other cities and towns. So equip people for that. How do I equip people to plant churches in other cities? One of the things that we did is short-term Bible college. So what? I can't go to Indore. I can't go to Madhya Pradesh, go keep doing survey. Or I can't go to all these other uh, North Indian uh, places in North India and other places. I'm here in Bangalore. I'm working here. I'm ministering here. I'm serving here. But how do I get people to plant churches there? So short-term Bible college. So we started this many years back. So we used to go as staff, teach, come back. But now with our big, bigger facility, we have students who come here. We teach them for two months. We encourage them, go back, plant churches. Right? Uh, whatever you've learned, put it into practice. Right? Again, if, if somebody, if you see that most of our outreach churches, nine out of 10 are all our Bible college students who've gone back and started churches, most of them. right? Uh, they've come, they've studied with us either one year, either two years, or they have done their short-time Bible, co Bible college course with us, and then they've gone back and planted churches. So, for example, the one in Varanasi, one in Kalyan, they're all our Bible college students, and Nasik. Uh, so these are all our Bible college students who studied with us, and then they went back. We helped them to start, right, in terms of getting a space, uh, getting people together, uh, just gave them guidelines. Now, think now. Understand this. Here in Bangalore, we all work as one. Five locations work as one, but oh, we also got Mangalore. So even APC Mangalore because it's an English church. But the other locations, outreach churches, they all follow their own way, right? They have worship, testimony time. They have their own sermons that they preach every Sunday. So we don't tell them you have to preach Sunday sermon, what we are preaching. You know, because they are at different levels. Their spiritual walk, the, the culture is different. The people are different. But here in the city of Bangalore and even Mangalore, we're all like in one mind. right? So we all have the same. So when you, you envision them, you send them out for church planting teams. and. What are some of the church uh, options for new church plants? Churches function independently. Either we can function independently, as we just spoke about that, or churches can function as a satellite church. Now, the satellite church is not something that is really picked up here in our uh, nation of India, but it is definitely there many places uh, in the West, is especially, right? So where they basically how the satellite churches work is there's a there's a location, there's a main church, and maybe in another city or another town, another uh, in another place, there is, they meet in a place. So what happens is they have a regular worship, in-house worship. The service goes on, and the sermon is from the main church. So the pastor is preaching in the main church, and they're all sitting here and listening to the sermon. Right. But the, they have a satellite, that church has a pastor, they have leaders, they have cell groups, everything is there. Right. So this is something that may catch up, we don't know, in our nation. Uh, it has a lot of advantages, a lot of disadvantages also. Uh, but anyways, these are options that we have. Right. So for example, think of it, you know, we have APC Central as live streaming, we can also make it like a 
example campus church where everyone are uh, you know all locations and even our outreach churches can just directly watch us uh, you know that's available even now but in the future we can that's an option and then it's a system for spiritual oversight and nurture so when you look at uh, planting additional congregations just replicate what you did in your first in the first church right as you pioneered the church replicate it so it becomes a chain reaction you pioneer you get administration get an organizational structure there's a pastoral stage the equipping stage apostolic stage just repeat finish repeat repeat it could be a church we have planted with 10 people the bigger picture is one day will be an apostolic church right so that whole thing is a cycle that repeats right so what we'll do is we'll stop here right uh, i know just a small short short class but we'll stop here uh, we will meet next class and we'll get into spiritual aspects right the spiritual aspects of uh, church planting we looked at the natural aspects right surveying and all of all of that right preparing organizational uh, and then we'll we'll also touch in chapter 16 urban church growth models we can look at a few of them uh we look at the apc biblical blueprint model as well uh and then we'll also see a few churches here which did well some things that didn't work some things that worked uh we can pick up take some time here in chapter 16 and then get into chapter 17 next class right all right uh, thank you so much please use this time for you know if you'd like to revise your notes and um just study anything please use this time let's just close in prayer father we want to thank you for this time lord we thank you for teaching us and thank you lord for the wisdom that you have given us giving us lord i pray that you will continue to lead and guide us lord we commit the rest of the day into your hands in jesus name we pray amen, amen. right thank you everyone god bless